First House Bill 1303, a bill for an act to amend and reenact Section 15 of the Century Code relating to legislative authority to set tuition and fees at institutions of higher education. The fiscal note does not indicate the impact. Senator Davison. Uh, Mr. President, it feels like a Senate education day today. Um, in Gross House Bill 1303 makes a couple of small changes uh, which actually have a big impact on the powers of the State Board of Higher Education. Uh, you can take a look at that on page uh, 2 on line 6 uh, where it talks about um, the board shall uh, change tuition in the amounts established by the Legislative Assembly. And then on, on B, it, you can read there where it ends, uh, it uh, talks about uh, charging of the fees too. Um, the, the testimony of uh, from the bill sponsor. Uh, he did a nice job framing the issues. Uh, he focused, uh, focused in on the need to rein in skyrocketing tuition. So when asked what skyrocketing tuition meant, he said increases above the rate of inflation. When pressed a little bit harder, uh, and we actually took a look at the data of the tuition increases, we finally got to the elephant in the room, Mr. President. It was the 8.8% tuition increase asked for and received by our university located in Fargo shortly after a legislative adjournment in 2011. I know many of you were there and apparently the outcry worked because that particular university increased their tuition 0% the next year, which then of course brought it to a 4.4% increase over the biennium. It should be noted too that when the university from the Fargo area went and asked for that 8.8% increase that the college students supported that increase. The other question from the bill sponsor or the other focus was legislatively do we have the constitutional obligation to set tuition? Well within Article 8 Section 2 it talks it says that the legislative assembly may authorize tuition, fees, and service charges to assist in the financing of public schools of higher education. So we may do that. The last piece of the discussion focused on somehow that the tuition is the overriding factor in student debt. Let me just tell you a, a brief story about a young college student who graduated in 1982. He worked all summer, refereed basketball during the winter, worked at the bank on the weekends, and had a little bit of an athletic scholarship to play baseball. When his car died his senior year, there wasn't enough money to fix it or buy one. The solution was to take out a college loan, which was six or seven percent less interest rate than what it would cost at that point in time, which probably was 11, 12, 13 percent to do it on the open market through the bank. The point is, if you're going to argue that by taking back tuition, the setting of tuitions under the, legisla under legisla under the legislature, that this is somehow going to reverse skyrocketing student debt, the su my suggestion from this story is that how are students currently spending money? When we see the average college debt, is that really just tuition and fees and housing? What does it all include? What are they doing with those dollars? How are they living? What kind of cars are they driving? Those are all things to consider as, as you look at uh, taking the tuition back and you hear of the high debt that students are incurring outside of the direct <coughs> college costs. The testimony against the bill came from the students, student government representatives who wanted a voice in setting the tuition and the fees. They currently have that in the, in, on the State Board of Higher Education. The other thing, as we discussed it in committee, and, and I think our education, uh, Senate education, we had an excellent discussion. Um, it's, a, it's really proud to be on that committee. We talked about the progress that was made at the last legislative session regarding the funding <coughs> formula for higher education. Tremendous progress allows college presidents to begin looking past just each biennium and start to focus on strategically, long term, how are, how are we going to meet our goals, be more accountable, 
focused on student credits and, and put some incentives um, to, to really focus on the students and get the money into the classroom. So how will this bill impact that funding formula? After discussion, your Senate, Edu your Senate Education Committee uh, recommended a do not pass on engrossed House Bill 1303 and we asked for a red light. Senator Schneider. Mr. President, I thank the carrier for his explanation of the bill. I do want to just add a few of my own editorial comments to that. I, I welcome any of the members of this body to walk up and down University Avenue on one of the first nice days that we have this spring. You'll see students with colorful gauze wrapped around their arm because they're giving plasma to pay for things like books, to make ends meet uh, during difficult financial times that they sustain throughout any given semester. And so when we talk about student debt, Let's talk about the fact that tuition and fees in my alma mater have doubled in, in a little over 10 years since I graduated. That is unquestionably, Mr. President, the primary driver of student debt. And we have a serious issue with regard to student debt. We are the leader in the country when it comes to the percentage of students that graduate with at least some debt. We're not doing very well when it comes to average held student debt either. And so I want to make clear after having said what I just said, that this bill is a flawed response to the issue of college affordability. We as a legislature have the power, any given session, to put a cap on tuition, to freeze tuition. That is absolutely squarely within our wheelhouse when it comes to the power to appropriate funds to advance higher education in this state. As we consider the higher education funding bill, I would strongly recommend that we do cap tuition. We can do that right now. But saying that the legislature should take this duty over out of the hands of the State Board of Higher Education session after session, two years at a time, I think that is just a very blunt way and a very misguided way uh, to set higher education policy. So let's focus in on college affordability. Let's understand full well uh, the rising cost of tuition and the increase in fees and the role that those two things play in student debt, but let's also give a red light to this bill today. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, the question will be on the final passage of House Bill 1303. The Secretary open the key. Every member record their vote. Has every member voted? Does it? Senator Herbley? Does any member wish to change his or her vote? Secretary, close the key and take the tally. Tally reveals six senators voting A, 39 senators voting nay, two absent not voting. House Bill 1303 has failed. Next. next.